Athletes are more than just their numbers. Everything said and done, they are humans first. And just like all of us, they have a deep connection with places that made them and the people who supported them. In this new series, we try to look into those places and faces who made our superstars who they are today. Women's Quick Zone proudly presents Places and Faces. In this episode, let's have a chat with New Zealand cricket royalty, Susie Bates. Uh, let's start with where it all started, the University Oval in Dunedin. The um, first home. Time. Yeah. Home is what comes to mind. Um, and yeah, it's where I play for my beloved Sparks and I guess where I learned how to play cricket and, and where I realised I wanted to play for Otago and New Zealand. So when I go back there and I haven't got to play there a lot recently, but actually with the World Cup and in the last season with the Sparks, I have been able to play in Dunedin. So um, it's just so nice when you've played all around the world to finally go home and play in front of your family. So how was that experience finally to play at your home ground during the World Cup against Bangladesh? It was very stressful actually because the weather was horrible and I remember waking up and pulling the curtains and it didn't look great but the weather forecast was saying it was going to clear but it just didn't and I just remember going back to sleep because I just didn't want to know about it and I really thought we weren't going to play um, and then we got to the ground and our coach also said we were unlikely to play so I was pretty deflated um, and then next minute we were warming up and we were out there in the rain and then for me to be there at the end with Amelia Kerr, um, it was literally like a pinch yourself moment and yeah, it was something pretty special the way it all unfolded, looking like we weren't going to be playing and then to be out there to score the running, winning runs, it was pretty special. Also to have that kind of home support, the entire gallery shouting and celebrating every single run, how was that like to have that kind of support and home support? Yeah, it was actually really nice, but that first run, I think, was a relief for everyone. I think um, not only myself, but the crowd were desperate for me to score runs. So I remember hitting the first ball out to the cover sweeper and there was sort of a sigh of relief and a cheer um, that I'd got that first run. And then after that, like you said, they cheered every run. And yeah, it was a really nice moment. Dunedin's a small place, but they love their cricket and I've had so much support there and they always want to see me doing well so yeah I really appreciated coming off and everyone cheering even though it was a small number of people they're all very important people to me. And let's go to the face that I want to talk to you about your mate um, from universe like from the Dunedin Katie Martin. <laughs> One word. Bestie. Um, <laughs> yeah she's literally my best mate who I've played so much cricket with and been through so many experiences, highs and lows, and she's been there day in, day out. And every time we play for the Sparks, just having each other there, we just love every moment. And, you know, she's very close to finishing as well, her, her cricket career, which is going to be really hard for me, to be honest, because I really appreciate her friendship. And even at tournaments like this, she's not on my team, but having a coffee and catching up for breakfast and just having her around, um, it's so great. So I'll, she'll always be my best friend and hopefully when she stops playing cricket I'll still see her around hopefully she'll be on the mic commentating and saying nice things about me <laughs> which Katie Martin which mic suits Katie Martin the most behind the stump mic or the uh, commentary mic any mic suits Katie Martin she loves to chat she's always got something to say she's very funny so that is what I'm most excited about is she's going to be so successful outside of cricket and if she gets to commentate I'm going to enjoy listening to her jokes and also she's got such a good cricket brain so I think she's perfectly suited to commentating and it's exciting to see where that will take her. Of course and um, from Katie let's take you to another place you've called home for a very long time. Beautiful place Adelaide. Word. The beach, um, <laughs> yeah, Henley Beach um, is always a place when we have time off in Adelaide that I love just getting in the car and driving to and having a coffee at Joe's Kiosk and relaxing at the beach and yeah I guess Adelaide it's a bit quieter and I like 
the quiet place. So I've loved my time there. Um, the Strikers have been a great family away from home. And um, yeah, Adelaide is a great place to play cricket. And Adelaide Oval is a beautiful ground, but so is Karen Ralston Oval. So what are the memories of playing at both these Adelaide Oval and the Cabin Burton Oval? Um, Adelaide Oval, just a really picturesque cricket ground and um, I feel like it's a very famous cricket ground and so it's a special place to play. Always a good wicket as well for batting. Karen Ralston Oval, my memories are lots of runs and it's quite windy, there's always a big breeze so I don't like captaining there because you always have to take the breeze into factor and there's enough that other things that you have to think about let alone the wind and it's very high scoring ground. Can we just now tip to one person that we all should know a lot about, but we actually don't. And that's another sporting person from the Bates family, your sister, Olivia Bates, was the one word. Uh, one word, that's tough. Um, hilarious. <laughs> she is a very funny girl and um, yeah, she played a lot of netball for um, the Southern Steel and was a very talented athlete. She was actually a good cricketer, but um, at high school I made her play, but she didn't really enjoy it. So yeah, she's a great supporter of mine and she watches cricket a little bit. She doesn't love it as much as I do, but yeah, she's very, she's the funniest bait sister. <laughs> yeah, and I want to like, from that, I want to take you to your basketball. Uh, how, as we've seen many, many cricketers, especially in women's game, have played multiple sports. Um, Sophie has played uh, hockey and we've seen in these has played football. Haley Matthews has played javelin and all those. So how was your experience with basketball been? Uh, it was awesome and I think it's really important when you're younger that you play lots of different sports and you try lots of different sports because you never know what you're going to be good at and you never know what you're going to enjoy. And I just feel really privileged that I had the opportunities I did growing up with my family support to try different things. And I still love basketball, um, but when I finally had to make a decision, it was around opportunities and the opportunities in New Zealand for cricket um, were really exciting. And I've never regretted the decision to focus on my cricket, but there's always been a part of me that's desperate to get out on that basketball court. And I, I learned so much physically and mentally from that sport, so it's really helped my cricket. And so who's, who's your favorite uh, NBA and WNBA team? I quite like Golden State Warriors because I like Steph Curry and Clay Thompson. So at the moment, I'm gunning for them. Um, WNBA, I tend to follow that LA a Sparks, Sparks team because you know, same name and my brother lives in LA so um, those are the two teams. Sparks because yes. Sparks for life. Yeah, Sparks for life, exactly.